Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about alopecia. So what, why did I choose the topic alopecia? Because it's probably more common than we all think. Uh, there are some very staggering statistics that we can see later on. And because this is a common condition, um, medical students as future doctors should know about this condition. So the aims of uh, the presentation today are listed over here. We can pause the video to have a look at it. And by the end of this presentation, we should be familiar with all this. So first off, what is alopecia? Alopecia is basically hair loss. And an additional terminology that I like to add here is the word effluvium, which means shedding of hair. You'll know why I added this as it comes in handy later. So alopecia can be classified into two, which is non-scarring alopecia and scarring alopecia. Um, in this presentation, we'll be focusing on the non-scarring alopecias. So non-scarring alopecia, obviously there's no scarring, there's no tissue inflammation, there's no sign of atrophy of the skin, and if you look very closely on the scalp, you can see that the hair follicles are still present. Now before we look into the non-scarring alopecias, it's nice to know about the basic physiology of the hair. So there are three different hair types. Lanugo hair is what you see in preterm infants, whereas in adults you see the terminal hair and the vellus hair. Terminal hair is thick and long and pigmented, whereas the vellus hair is thin and short. If you think about your own body, terminal hair is found on areas where you have long hair, such as your scalp, your eyebrow, your eyelashes, your beard, your axilla, and also your pubic region. Whereas vellus hair is found everywhere else. Next, hair phases. So your hair undergoes three phases. First is the anagen phase, which is the growth phase of your hair. This is the longest phase. Then comes the catagen phase, where, which is the transformation phase of your hair, where your hair follicles undergo apoptosis and become smaller. And then comes the telogen phase, which is the resting phase. Now, back to non-scarring alopecia, there are four non-scarring alopecias, uh, namely anagen effluvium, telogen effluvium, androgenetic alopecia, and alopecia areata. We'll be first talking about anagen effluvium and telogen effluvium because these are both um, shedding of hair in different hair cycles. So, anagen effluvium, as the name suggests, is the shedding of hair, which is effluvium, in the anagen phase. Whereas, telogen effluvium is the shedding of hair in the telogen phase. Anagen effluvium is, uh, involves uh, impaired mitotic activity of anagen hair, usually caused by chemotherapy, whereas telogen effluvium is due to the accelerated shifting of hair into telogen phase, usually due to stress or hormonal changes. In anagen effluvium, there's usually more than 50% hair loss, whereas in telogen effluvium, it rarely affects more than 50% of your scalp. For anagen effluvium, it's of a rapid onset after the chemotherapy cycle, whereas for telogen effluvium, it occurs about 3-4 to four months after the inciting stress or hormonal changes. And in both anagen effluvium and telogen effluvium, you can see bow lines, which is a transverse um, ridging of your nails. Now, I just mentioned that telogen effluvium is caused by stress and hormonal changes. So, what are these exactly? Stress includes physical stress. Um, such as malignancy, chronic infection, or even acute febrile illness such as dengue fever, major surgery, and trauma. 
It can be psychological stress, such as depression, anxiety, and even exams. Stress can be um, rapid weight loss or certain drugs. Hormonal changes include hypo or hyperthyroidism, postpartum, uh, changing of oral contraceptive pills. We can probably gauge that telogen effluvium is more common in females because only females undergo postpartum, only females uh, take oral contraceptive pills, and hypo or hyperthyroidism is more common in females. Now who can tell me which one is energy influvium and which one is telogen influvium based on what I just told you. So the first picture shows energy influvium. As you can see, there's more than 50% hair loss in the scalp. Um, this is usually caused by chemotherapy. Whereas the second picture shows telogen influvium, uh, which is less than 50% hair loss, and usually due to stress or hormonal changes and occurs three to four months after that stress or hormonal change. Next we'll be talking about androgenetic alopecia, which is also known as male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss. There's a genetic predisposition for androgenetic alopecia. It's more common in males. It starts earlier in males. And here's the staggering statistic. By 50 years old, about 50% of all men have androgenetic alopecia. So it's probably more common than we think. Now there's actually a difference between male pattern and female pattern hair loss. And each of them have their own classifications. But I'm not I'm not going to go into detail about each of these classification. However, I put in the pictures so you can see the distribution of hair loss for each of these pattern hair loss. So in male pattern hair loss, the distribution of hair loss focuses on the frontal temporal area and also the vertex area. Whereas in female pattern hair loss, um, the hair loss uh, occurs in the frontal scalp region but interestingly, it's past the fringe area in front here. And what causes androgenetic alopecia? It all comes down to pro the process of miniaturization, which is the transformation of your long and thick terminal hair into your thin and short vellus hair. And eventually, the hair can go into total atrophy. So as you can see in this diagram here, testosterone is converted by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase into DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. And it's this DHT that causes the miniaturization of your hair. Next, we'll be talking about alopecia areata. So what is it? is a non-scarring alopecia characterized by one or more patches of hair loss. Uh, it's of unknown etiology. It commonly presents in young adults associated with autoimmune disease and a family history. Now there are four different types of alopecia areata. The most typical one that you see, alopecia areata. Is the solitary or multiple round or oval areas of hair loss. You can see patches of hair loss in the typical one. However, if the hair loss affects the whole scalp, it's known as alopecia areata totalis. It affects the whole scalp and uh, other terminal body hair such as your eyebrow, eyelashes, moustache, beard, everything. It's known as alopecia areata universalis and it affects your hair in a band-like pattern around your scalp it's known as ophiasis. Now in alopecia areata something you can see is known as an exclamation mark hair where your hair becomes narrow and tapers as it enters the scalp. This can be, spe this can be seen especially on the periphery of the patch of hair loss. 
Sometimes you will also be able to see neopeating, but ne this neopeating is more fine than what you see in um, psoriasis, and this is known as hammered brass nail. It's an indicator of poor prognosis in alopecia areata. In terms of treatment, there's no treatment for anagen effluvium and telogen effluvium. For anagen effluvium, you can reassure the patient that the hair will regrow after the chemotherapy. And for telogen effluvium, uh, you can tell the patient that it is a normal part of the hair cycle. For androgenetic alopecia, you can give minoxidil, finasteride or dutasteride, uh, which is the 5 alpha reductase inhibitor. It inhibits the enzyme that we saw just now in the diagram. And in females, you can give anti androgens. In alopecia areata, you can also give topical minoxidil. Topical potent steroids, weak steroids, will not work. Um, Intralesional steroids this is what we see in the clinics where they dilute the what they call shinkot injection, which is a triamcinolone acetate, which is an A steroid. They mix this steroid with um, local anesthetic, linocaine, and then they inject it directly to the areas of uh, the patches of hair loss in alopecia areata. Um, you can also induce contact dermatitis via some agents, certain agents. And the new kit in, in the block here is tofacitinib, which is nice to remember because tofa sounds like hair in Chinese. And tofacitinib is a genus kinase inhibitor. It's a new drug. It's a biologic. And it's shown to work even for severe alopecia areata, such as the alopecia areata totalis and universalis. However, it's a rather new drug, so um, side effect profile is not really um, well established yet. In summary, we talk about the classification of alopecia. There's scarring and non-scarring alopecias. Understand what is scarring alopecia. Oh, understand what is non-scarring alopecia. So non-scarring alopecia, there's no scarring, no tissue inflammation, no atrophy of the skin. And also you can still see the hair follicles. These are the different types of non-scarring alopecia. There are four. Two are related to the phases, which is the anagen effluvium and telogen effluvium, whereas the other two are androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata. These are the differences between anagen effluvium and telogen effluvium. One affects more than 50% of the hair, usually caused by chemotherapy, and the other usually affects less than 50% of the hair, occurs 3 to 4 months after the inciting stress or hormonal change. And describe why is androgenetic alopecia and alopecia areata, I've just went through this just now. And that's all for my presentation. Hope it helps. Thank you.